Welcome, welcome, welcome to Breaking the Ice Bucket, uh, Changing the Game with Facebook Challenges with myself and Amy. How are you doing, Amy? Great. Thank you, Jill. Lovely to see you. And you too, and you too. So we're here, we are opening uh, FRO 2020, hashtag, 2021 hashtag, obviously. Um, so yeah, keep the hashtag flowing and um, obviously we'll be around later on once the session is finished for a chat, but I think we might just get things started. So who are we? So my name is Jill O'Herlihy. I'm Head of Customer Happiness at GivePanel. Yes, I love my title. Uh, previous to that, I was with Mental Health Ireland, which is a small Irish mental health charity uh, where I fell madly in love with Facebook fundraising and uh, managed to raise over a million from birthday, fundraiser, birthday fundraisers in 2019. So that's a small snapshot of me. And there I am wearing a princess crown. So that'll give you a bit of an insight into who I am. And Amy? I am Amy Bowers and I'm a Challenge Events Fundraising Manager at the Bone Cancer Research Trust. I manage the Charities Programme of Challenge Events and I lead on our Facebook challenges. We've delivered six Facebook challenges since August last year and we've raised over £2.5 million with them. Unbelievable. So a little bit of housekeeping. So we're here for 30 minutes. We will have a Q&A at the end for 15 minutes. So myself and Amy will both be there um, in a room so you can come and chat with us. Uh, we can also have, we'll be here throughout the session as well. So if you have anything you want to pop into the chat, we're here to answer your questions too. Uh, this, uh, this session is worth 100% focus. It's early. You should have your coffee. Uh, you can be sitting down the start of your day, the start of your FRO 2021. So put the email away, shut down the second screen because listening could be worth millions. Now, what would it be like if you could consistently grow digital income and create a new high volume fundraising channel? So I guess you guys ask yourselves that quite a lot. This is what it could be like. So you'll see here, what we have is a, um, a customer of Give Panels who has uh, been, been given us their information here. So we have an average of 19,525 per month in 2019, quite a healthy amount to be raising per month. But what you'll see has happened in 2020 is that we have all of these lovely ski slopes and mountain ranges that are within their, within their, uh, within their graphs. So we'll have 580,000 uh, uh, euro or, or dollars. We just converted it all to dollars for ease. And then 363, a big, a big uh, skite up there. So 2019, 234,000 versus 2020, 2.5 million. That's a 10 by 7x growth. So this is what happens when you actually activate Facebook challenges. So in the next 30 minutes, we are going to show you myself and Amy. So Amy has all of the hands-on experience from doing her first one all the way through to her sixth. Uh, into her seventh now, I think, Amy, is that right? Yes, that's right. Excellent. So how to generate thousands of new funds, uh, Facebook fundraisers uh, with a simple, low-cost strategy that works even during lockdowns and also out of lockdowns. Hopefully, we'll be out of our lockdowns soon, globally. Uh, the core problem with Facebook fundraising and how to solve it. Why Facebook groups are the secret source to fundraising and how to get a huge return on Facebook ad spend and how not to trip yourself up by implementing shiny digital technology that your supporters don't want or need. So we know your time is precious, so I'm not selling anything here, nor is Amy. We're just giving you ideas and giving you our experiences as well. But for those of you who stay to the very end, it's only 30 minutes, so hopefully we can we can keep you uh, engaged. We've got a small gift that we're going to send you. So at the end, we'll give you details of how you can apply for a free one-on-one -on -one strategy session uh, with our team of Facebook fundraising experts at GivePanel. So that is available to you. Plus we have our Facebook fundraising benchmark, benchmark report, which we just launched last month which gives a load of details about what's going on in the world of Facebook fundraising. So let's get into it. Does this sound like you? This was Amy before she started her, her Facebook challenges. Stressed about hitting your fundraising targets? Most definitely. Um, set up uh, Facebook fundraising, but not really getting any fundraisers. Getting some birthday fundraisers, but not, not enough to, to sort of to get the, to, to break the break the barriers that you're trying to break or reach the targets. Uh, you're hearing about other nonprofits who are getting huge successes on Facebook, but you're not sure how they're doing it. So where are all these peaks coming from? And you're worried that Facebook income may stop. 
uh, and you're too reliant on it. So those birthday fundraisers, what happens if they stop? What happens if Facebook stops um, uh, uh, making it an option to actually to, to deliver a Facebook birthday fundraiser? So we need to look into all of these options outside of that. So this is the old way. This is what we all did. Again, my background is my background is actually PR and then Mental Health Ireland in communications and fundraising. So come up with a clever campaign um, that has alliteration or that has rhymes. Hire an amazing creative agency. That's going to cost. Uh, invest big budget in a microsite. Remember microsites? Everybody had them, has them yeah. still. Uh, start the experience with a really long sign up form. Uh, charge an entry fee because you have to charge an entry fee for all of your, your challenge events. Uh, use a standalone fundraising platform where people have to have a username and a password. How many usernames, how many passwords? How do I get into that site again? Uh, plan a national and or regional PR campaign, of course, because people need to get to know about it. Start a brand new Facebook page because you want to have a community for these people. And then also do a social media campaign. So this is tongue in cheek, but cost 100,000, raise 10,000. This is the new way and this is what we're going to bring you through. So come up with a simple concept that can be understood in under two seconds. Like it's it's sometimes it's too good to be true and um, get the prospects excited before they decide to get more involved. Keep the user on Facebook for the whole experience. That's where they've started. That's where they want to be. That's where they're comfortable. So we're going to leave them there. Make it ridiculously easy and quick to sign up. Save costs on expensive designers, building microsites, setting up stands uh, standalone fundraising platforms. All of that, all of all of those costs obliterated. Uh, two taps to set up a fundraising page without leaving Facebook. Uh, make sure their friends and family see their fundraising pages and donate to them. Peer pressure is great. And gathering all, them all in an amazing connected community, which is the Facebook group. And use simple Facebook ads to drive success and stay in control uh, and no other promotion needed. You can see we have our dancing man and our Spanish dancer here. They're incredibly happy because they have spent 10,000 and they are going to raise up to a million. So these figures are not pie in the sky, they are very possible. The reason that they're possible is because Facebook has built a better fundraising tool and an ecosystem that they don't, didn't realize they had. So they have Facebook groups for community, they know they have this, they have Facebook fundraisers for the nonprofit sector, and they have ads for acquisition. So what we have done is we have basically pulled all of these together to make a perfect ecosystem for the Facebook challenge. Uh, and what we're going to do is going to bring you through how this works, why it works so well. It's hard work, Amy, though, isn't it? Like it's not all. It's 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 not it's not easy. You will be working hard. Am I right? Absolutely. It is a lot of work, but you will reap the rewards if you put in the work. Excellent. So I'll let Amy take it away, um, and we will. I will be in and out occasionally just to add my two cents as I do. So take it away, Amy. Fantastic. Thanks, Jill. So a little bit about the Bone Cancer Research Trust. We are a team of 20 based in Leeds in the UK, and we are the leading charity dedicated to fighting primary bone cancer through research, information, awareness and support. We ran our first Facebook challenge in August 2020, and it had a huge impact on our income for last year. So over the last few years, we've tried really hard to diversify our income streams and Facebook challenges offered a, another fantastic opportunity to do this. So you can see from the chart in 2018, we hit our first million. In 2019, that rose up to almost 1.7 million. And then at the start of last year, we were looking at an anticipated loss of over £860,000 due to the COVID pandemic. By the end of the year, we'd raised 2.7 million pounds. We'd had our most successful year to date with a year on year increase of 64%. And that was largely due to Facebook challenges. So what we're gonna do today is bring you through the four secrets that bone cancer research have used to crack Facebook challenges. So go ahead, Amy. So you might be asking yourself, should we be doing these challenges? And I'd say, firstly, they are an excellent medium term fundraising solution and the reason I say medium term is because they do run the risk of saturation once more and more charities adopt this model but it does give you the opportunity to be innovative with your challenges. The model has proven it works, we've seen great success with it, the number you see on the screen there that was our final fundraising total for our 2000 burpees in November challenge last year, 
we've never had a challenge event come anywhere near close to that kind of income. That is actually more than we raised through all of our income streams back in 2017, which is just incredible. Unbelievable. Sorry, were you finished with that one? I was just going to say it's also um, great for as an acquisition model. So we had 12,000 members in our 2000 burpees group. The majority of those were new supporters. They were cold supporters, so new to us. And a third of those opted in to further, further communications from us. So fantastic as an acquisition model as well. Brilliant. Excellent. Because that's what we all want. We all want that donor data. Absolutely. So the next thing we need to do is to is to develop a hook and we want to move from the old way of doing things to this new way of doing things. So before we thought of a complicated hook, this time we are not going to have a complicated hook in any way, shape or form. So that hook, that challenge, we are looking at a challenge done over the course of a month and running it that way means you've got these supporters doing the same activity over the same time frame. And not only does that help build that fantastic community in the Facebook groups, from an admin perspective, having that clear cut off for the um, for fundraising means thanking is really um, it's much easier for thanking, and you can close off that challenge and then move on to your next one if you do your next one. In terms of the challenge themselves, you don't want to overcomplicate it. It wants to be X challenge in X months. So 2,000 burpees in April, 100 miles in February. They are simple and straightforward. They're easy to understand when you're scrolling through your news feed. Um, and another thing with the hook, it is first and foremost about the challenge itself, about the activity and getting fit. As charities, we're used to being cause-led, but the cause is very much secondary with these challenges. The way you're going to get huge numbers of call supporters into a group wanting to do these challenges is to focus on the activity itself rather than the cause. Yep. So we're trying to picture ourselves what we want to do with our lives and then go, ooh, 10,000 steps a day. I need to be doing that. <laughs> so exactly. it is it's person, person first. The next is creating the community. So this is really this is this is where the hard work starts, really, isn't it, Amy? Yes, definitely. Yeah. So we want to create that community and the Facebook groups offer the perfect opportunity to do that. They are essentially the glue that holds that community, the challenge together. It's where we engage with the supporters. It's where we update supporters and fundraising totals. So it's it's essential that people are having a, a positive and a memorable experience in that, those groups. It makes them want to come back and it makes them, it motivates them to fundraise as well. Absolutely. And you see all those images there on the left. So these are all your groups that you've had. Um, so yeah, super engaging. And I look, I like, I want to be part of these groups. They look like they're great fun. Not sure about the burpees though. That's very cruel. <laughs> <laughs> so some tips when it comes to the groups. Um, it seems like an obvious statement, but the more you can engage with your supporters, the more success you'll see. And the one thing I will say is that task shouldn't be underestimated. We've got thousands of people, thousands of members in these groups, and we ensure that we respond to every single post, whether that's a like or a comment, every post gets engaged with. Um, create that engagement and that community feel that people get from the groups does make them come back more and more to, to future challenges. Um, so it is really key in terms of keeping, um, retaining those supporters. We, we find that the supporters are really good at creating that um, at starting conversations between themselves, but we do give that a helping hand with um, scheduled posts. Again, not cause led. This is very much about the activity and how the supporters are getting on. So anything that prompts a response, how are you getting on with your burpees? Where's everyone from? Those kinds of conversation starters work really well in these groups. We also provide a, a social media toolkit. So that just contains a lot of different graphics that um, kind of milestone graphics halfway there. I've completed my burpee challenge. Thanks for sponsoring me. So they're things that the supporters can share with their friends and family to drum up more support, more donations. We also provide a Facebook profile picture frame, um, which always go down really well. People love to shout about these challenges. So that's a really nice way for them to kind of spread awareness um, of the challenge even further. Yeah, what, what I, what, oh, sorry. What, what I what I love about these groups is that it really does become become sort of a peer to peer thing. So you have people all arriving into these groups, and then all of a sudden you have the people who are potentially more confident in the groups, and they then start answering the questions that your other supporters are answer are asking. Exactly. So all of a sudden, every all the all the 
all your fundraisers are helping your other fundraisers because they they may have joined the group a little bit earlier and understand what's happening. I love seeing that. Exactly. It is it is really lovely to see. And the one thing with these groups is um, that you don't want to underestimate, as I say, is the amount of time it takes to to monitor the group. So we monitor them during the day, nine till five, seven till nine on an evening, 10 till six on a weekend. So it is a very demanding task and scrolling through Facebook can get can be very draining. So we just ensure that we have cover and we alternate that. Someone covers a morning, someone covers an afternoon. Um, which is, but it is key. So you've got a kind of fresh pair of eyes, someone that's really motivational and inspiring, um, commenting on posts within the group. Brilliant, brilliant, yeah. So not one person to do all of that because you wouldn't last terribly long. Exactly. And within the group, so we're, we're focusing on that community participation. We see so many inspirational stories. People will organically share their reasons for taking on these challenges. Um, lots of creativity. You can see someone there in a fancy dress. He did a different fancy dress every week, which is fantastic. People <laughs> um, rope in their friends and family. And you can see from some of the comments on this slide just how much people are supportive and how much they motivate each other and how much they love being part of these groups. Um, another thing I'd say, which is kind of an added bonus for, for the members of staff that are monitoring the group, if it's possible, take on the challenge yourself. So I did the 2000 burpees in November challenge. It's very <laughs> but you just got that kind of extra thing to bond over. The, the supporters feel like you're in it with them and very much was every burpee of the way. Um, but it really does just make, make it feel like um, a kind of team. You're not just an admin, you're one of them, which is really nice. Yeah, and you get to talk to them on exactly the same level. So yeah, like exactly what you said, you're one of them. So you, you're feeling their pain <laughs> all the way through. That's it. So the next secret is to fill up the group via the Facebook lead ads. Um, uh, are you, were you, when you started this, Amy, a Facebook lead ad expert? Absolutely not. I've had no training in Facebook whatsoever. It's very much a case of uh, figuring it out as you go along. So I've done ads in the past, but this was a very different approach for me um, in that there was little to no targeting. We're selecting um, a geographical location and an age range, and that is it. There's no behaviours or interest targeting, and we're using um, a variety of creative and copy. So we input several versions of creative and copy and create a lot of different combinations of that and then let Facebook algorithms figure out which ones are going to uh, get the, the best response. We did try using the dynamic ads function in Facebook, but we found that in terms of tracking performance, it was a bit more difficult. So we reverted back to inputting the ads manually. With these ads, um, there's definitely no need for professional photos, really fancy photos. We used either team members or family members for our photos. Countless times now I have handed my husband a t-shirt and said, come on, we're off out in the street for a photo shoot. <laughs> I say people think, really well. think, people think he's an influencer or something at this stage, I'd say. <laughs> <laughs> um, but you'll notice that all of these photos feature our T-shirt. We give away a free T-shirt when people register, and that is the incentive. That's what gets people clicking sign up at, um, on the ads, and ultimately they'll end up in the group and fundraising for us. So if you are doing a free, whatever your incentive might be, a T-shirt, a medal, a bandana, that really does want to be featured in your ads. We tried stock images, but the anything with our our branding and our t-shirts in far outperformed any stock images. And then we we always use images. We did use videos for one of our burpees challenges purely because a burpee, the movement is really difficult to capture as an image. Um, that worked really well for us, but our go-to would always be images. They're much easier to consume once you're scrolling through your Facebook. They're really, um, really easy and eye-catching. So we'd always go with images first. And then if we've got a boomerang or a video, a couple of videos that we want to try, we'd pop those in as well and test them. And I believe people have a lot of opinion on what an actual burpee is and what it isn't. Is that correct? They <laughs> do. Um, yeah, my version of a scale burpee generated a lot of comments, but that resulted in a lot of members joining the group. So it was win-win, really. Excellent. <laughs> So this is kind of the process of what the journey looks like for supporters. So they see that ad on Facebook. They've got that promise of a free T-shirt and a fitness challenge that draws them in. They fill out the lead generation form on Facebook, which is auto-filled by Facebook in most cases. So it's literally just two clicks and then that's it. It's complete. 
they're then directed to join the Facebook group. And once they're in there, they see a welcome post that says uh, that highlights the steps needed to register for the T-shirt. And then they're encouraged to set up a Facebook fundraiser. So these are the steps that we use for our first two challenges. For the, th for the following challenges, we tweaked that process ever so slightly um, and the process actually delivered an even better ROI. So I'd say this is kind of the traditional approach, um, but I'll talk a little bit more on, on how we change that later. So these were the results. This is our latest campaign in uh, challenge in February that we ran. We had just under 12,000 leads, which um, we then went on to have just under 8,000 group members with a conversion rate of 66%, which we were really happy with. And with these, we were looking at um, a cost per lead of two pound or less, ideally. So a cost per lead of one pound 43 was fantastic. Absolutely, well done, brilliant. And then the most important thing. So now we have the hook. We have what we want them to do. We have built the community that we want them to enter into. We're now filling up the group with all of these people eager to take on that activity for that month. And now we need them to start raising money for the cause. So what did you do? So as I mentioned, we tweaked that process ever so slightly. Uh, we wanted, we were looking at the number of group members to fundraisers, that conversion percentage, and we wanted to increase it. So what we did in the welcome post in the group, we changed the first step to set up a Facebook fundraiser. So we use a, a one-click link from Give Panel, and the supporters can set up their fundraiser in one click. We then encourage them to use the invite function to invite the friends and family to their fundraisers to kickstart the fundraising. And then we post a welcome message onto the fundraising page, um, which includes a registration link to sign up for their, to register for their free t-shirt. And by doing it this way, we actually saw an increase in conversion from group members to fundraisers of 20%. So you've got that, that promise that the, sorry, the free t-shirt encourages people to set up their fundraiser. It reduced the number of duplicate and multiple requests we were seeing because the group, the registration link wasn't openly available available in the group for everyone to click on. Um, it reduced the number of t-shirts being sent to people that weren't going to fundraise and set up a fundraiser, which improved our, our ROI. And then we had that added bonus because we were um, posting that initial post on the supporters fundraiser within 24 hours. We're engaging with them from the very off. Um, and as a 20% increase in conversion to fundraisers was fantastic for us. Absolutely. And I suppose you need to do it the original way a few times before you start tweaking this model. So we would certainly say if you're interested in doing this model or learning more about it, obviously get in touch uh, with uh, with myself or with Amy. Uh, but we would we would recommend that you do it the the original way first and then once you become a bit of an expert yourself in your own challenges then you can start tweaking these things and we love hearing how people are doing it differently too so yay love this <laughs> yeah so that's a lovely graph that shows the so one of our recent challenges this is the first three weeks of advertising so um within three weeks of the ads going live we raised more than our highest income generating traditional challenge london marathon has ever raised for us. And that's in the space of three weeks and not to mention with a much, much better ROI. So we were, um, yeah, it was blown away, especially the first time we saw the first challenge we ran, seeing um, the income come in as quickly as this was just yeah. fine. And I think like everybody understands what this chart means. It just like goes straight up. And the thing is as well to mention is that all of this money, um, uh, came in before the challenge month even started. Is that right? Yes, that's right. Yeah. 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 So what we kind of see as well is, is we'd see a peak up towards the start of the challenge. And then on day one of the challenge, so you've two types of people in this world, you have people who do what they're told. So they're asked to join the Facebook group, register and set up their fundraiser. So you've that sort of, sort of person, or you have the person who's a little bit like me, um, who joined the group registered and then didn't set up my fundraiser because I did I did a, a, a challenge back in November, and um, didn't set up my fundraiser until the first day of the challenge. So you will always see a peak on the first day of the challenge as well and you probably recognize that within your within your figures as well amy do you absolutely every, every challenge a spike on the first day a spike on the last day that's it yeah that's consistent through every challenge so here's the final results 
Yes, yeah, so our February challenge, we ended up raising over half a million pounds. We had seven and a half thousand group members, sent out 3,000 t shirts, and had 2,533 fundraisers. Um, which was a percentage we were really happy with in terms of fundra um, t fundraisers and um, pack requests. And then we had over 2,000 people. So they, remember, these are people that are new to us. They were cold supporters. And we have a new, uh, another 2,000 people who opted into further marketing from, uh, for, from us. Unbelievable. And that's the thing you now need. You now get to target these 2000 plus people and bring them on another journey. Uh, perhaps that could be a uh, legacy. It could be regular giving. It can be anything. It can be volunteering. So it's great to have that, that, that information. So this is what it looks like. Facebook ads, you're looking at $3 to two pounds uh, cost per lead. Um, Facebook ads, Facebook lead form into the Facebook group. You get around 80% of that of those people into the Facebook group. And then you will get uh, 33%, sorry, 50% uh, approximately, you got 30, you got 66%, but 50% approximately will fill out that form. GivePanel has a form that we use. Uh, there are obviously Google forms that you can use. You can use a million and one different types of forms to get people uh, engaged and get them set up to get that incentive to them. And then the Facebook fundraiser at 33%. So these are the, this is the journey and this is the funnel that people will go along. And these are the benchmarks that we, that we look at. So that's it folks, develop a hook. Amy brought you through that and what her hook was and what her hooks for her other challenges were. The community is where the glue is. It's where people are craving connection at the moment. So uh, this is where the, this great connection goes on. And believe me, like just go into any nonprofit, have a look, do they have a challenge group open? Pop in, have a look at them. They are, they are just lovely, lovely places to be. Uh, fill up the group with Facebook lead ads and then get them fundraising. Obviously, we want to be uh, making some money for our nonprofits uh, by putting in all of this effort. So this is what it looks like. We would advise that you start with a small pilot first um, because you might say, oh, I have 10,000 T-shirts in the warehouse. Let's do a, a challenge with 10,000. Um, and Amy's like, no, not your first one. Um, so yeah, start small and start with small targets and make sure that you can get it right before you scale it. So it looks like four months. So month one, you're beginning to think about it. You're doing your budgets, you're planning, you're creative, you're figuring out what it is, activity in what month. Um, then in month two, you're going to be doing promotion and acquisition. So this is when your ads are going to go live. This is when you're going to start seeing all that money coming in and that lovely graph going up. Uh, it's also when your Facebook group is going to be uh, be activated. So this is when you need all hands on deck in that group moderating. And uh, then the challenge itself begins on the first of the month, ends on the 30th, 31st, 28th, whatever month you do it in. And then you have the wrapping up and reporting at the end. Uh, so it is a four month process. Would you agree with that, Amy? Yeah, definitely. In terms of setting up your, your first challenge, absolutely. The more you do, obviously, the more, the more you get your head around things and the more well rehearsed you are with them. As I say, I've done six now, I'm on to our seventh. I actually set up a Facebook challenge for the Captain Tom 100 challenge in a day um, a couple of weeks ago. <laughs> so I, yeah, I have a lot of experience in, uh, in them now, but it, definitely for your first pilot um, pilot challenge, that's the kind of time frame you, you need to be looking at. Excellent, excellent. So should you be doing a Facebook challenge? If you can answer yes to these questions, then have a serious conversation internally with your teams. Are your potential participants personally affected by your cause? This is really important. It works really well for the medical, mental health, hospice type organizations. Uh, so, so have a look at that. Is that you? It might work really well for you. Do you have a strong brand? Are you called the rainbow organization? And people aren't quite sure what that is or the rainbow team. Um, uh, or are you co called Bone Cancer Research Trust? I know what that is. I know what I'm supporting. It makes it a lot easier for the transparency. Uh, do you have a community fundraising team? These are the people who are going to activate your Facebook group for you and be moderators and run this whole experience for your supporters. Uh, do you already have lots of birthday fundraisers on Facebook? This is a really good sign because Facebook algorithm is pushing people towards your organization. So that's a very good sign. And and finally, are you prepared to do a lot of work in a short period of time to make this happen? If you answer yes to these questions, then you should be having a chat internally.
So look, thank you so much for taking the time out. And myself and Amy are so delighted that we were able to open uh, FRO 2021. Uh, if you email, if you uh, look up givepanel.com benchmark report, you can download that. Also, if you're interested, I promise that we give something at the end. If you're interested in a one-to-one -one strategy session uh, with Guy, you can uh, email guy at givepanel.com. Dot com and there are some limited places there available for that but do have a look at the benchmark report and um, it's really really interesting we basically analyzed all of our um our uh, uh customers from 2019 results to 2020 so there's a lot of interesting stats in there so it's q a time so if you want to pop into the q a amy you're going to be there aren't you yes i'll be there looking forward to speaking to you Excellent. So we're going to be in there. We're going to be live speaking to you. Thank you so much for taking the time out. And we are just so glad again that we could open the entire session. So thanks a million and bye. Have a lovely, have a lovely day.